Hi, my friends. Today, I want to present you a new story. Enjoy watching it. I had always loved the quiet hum of the salon in the early morning, the software of hair dryers, the cheerful chatter of regular customers, and the scent of freshly brewed coffee mingling with the aroma of hair products. It was my little slice of heaven. My name is Hannah Frost, and I was a hairstylist at Mara's Beauty, the largest salon in our small town. The salon was owned by Hudson, a strict businessman who valued profits over people, but I had always believed that kindness was a currency of its own. The summer sun cast a warm glow over the small town as I opened the doors of Mara's Beauty for another day. The salon was my pride and joy, a labor of love and perseverance. Today, however, was different. It was a day that would mark a turning point in my life. Earlier that morning, while grabbing a quick coffee at the local stand, I ran into Jason Parker. I recognized him immediately. Jason was a veteran, his military past known to everyone in town. I had seen him often, his once proud demeanor now replaced by a weary resignation. His clothes were worn, his hair and beard unkempt a stark contrast to the man who had once been the town's hero. Morning, Jason. I greeted him, my voice cheerful despite the early hour. How's it going today? Jason looked up, his eyes reflecting both gratitude and weariness. Oh, morning, Hannah. I'm getting by. Just here for my usual coffee. Let me get that for you. I insisted, already reaching for my wallet. It's on me. Thanks, but you don't have to. I insist. I cut him off with a friendly grin. We're friends, after all. After placing his order, we chatted for a few minutes while waiting. It was clear that the simple gesture of buying him a coffee brightened his mood. As we walked towards the salon together, I could see a faint smile on his face, a rare sight these days. When we reached the salon, I glanced at the clock. The first client wasn't due for another hour, so I decided to offer Jason a free haircut. You know, Jason, if you're free later, I'd like to give you a haircut. It's on the house, I said, trying to sound casual but hoping he'd accept. Jason hesitated. I don't want to be a bother. Nonsense, I said, waving off his protest. You've done so much for the town. It's the least I can do. He nodded a grateful smile stretching across his face. Well, if you insist, I'll come by later. With a quick farewell, Jason walked off, and I prepared the salon for the day. I couldn't shake the feeling that today was going to be significant, a blend of hope and uncertainty. Later, as I finished with a client, Jason walked into the salon. His presence was a welcome sight, and I motioned for him to take a seat in the chair. As I draped the cape over him, I noticed a hint of nervousness in his eyes. Just relax, I said, starting to work on his hair. We're going to make you look sharp. Thanks, Hannah, Jason replied, his voice soft. This really means a lot to me. We chatted as I cut his hair, the conversation flowing easily. Jason talked about his time in the service, his struggles since returning, and his attempts to rebuild his life. I listened, feeling a deep empathy for him. Just as I was finishing up, Hudson, my boss, walked into the salon. His face was a mask of stern disapproval as he took in the scene. His eyes flicked to Jason, then to me, and I could sense the tension in the room. What's going on here? Hudson's voice was sharp. I'm just giving Jason a free haircut, I said, trying to sound as composed as possible. Hudson's eyes narrowed. We don't do free haircuts here, Hannah. If he can't pay, then neither can you. I invited him, I said firmly. It's my decision. If you're going to give away services for free, you can do it elsewhere. You're fired, he declared, his voice final. Parker looked horrified, his eyes wide with guilt and panic. No, please, it's my fault. I'll pay, I'll find a way. Parker, it's okay, I said, trying to calm him. I turned to Hudson. I made the choice, Hudson. I believe in helping those who need it. Hudson's face remained impassive. You can believe whatever you want, Hannah, but not on my time. Pack your things. 
I nodded, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. I had done the right thing, and no job was worth compromising my values. I gathered my belongings, my hands trembling slightly. As I walked out of the salon, Parker followed me, his face a mask of guilt and sorrow. I'm so sorry, Hannah. I never wanted this to happen. Parker, it's not your fault. You have nothing to apologize for, I reassured him. This is just a new beginning for both of us. Little did I know, this seemingly small act of kindness would set off a chain of events that would change my life forever. As we walked through town, news of my firing spread quickly. In a small town like ours, news traveled faster than the wind. By the time we reached the town square, several people had already approached me, expressing their outrage. Is it true, Hannah? Hudson fired you for giving Parker a free haircut. Mrs. Green, the town baker, asked incredulously. Yes, it's true. I admitted, feeling a swell of support as people gathered around us. That's just wrong. Someone exclaimed, Hannah, you've always been so kind to everyone. I smiled gratefully, feeling a warmth in my chest despite the circumstances. The support of my community was a balm to my wounded spirit. 25 minutes after being fired, the most surprising thing happened. The mayor, Mr. Thompson, arrived with Parker. He approached me with a serious expression, but there was kindness in his eyes. Is it true, Hannah? You were fired for helping a veteran? He asked. I nodded, and he shook his head in disbelief. For your kindness and your unwavering support of our community, we want to honor you, he said, pulling out a certificate of recognition. My eyes widened in shock as he handed it to me, but that wasn't all. He also gave me a large white envelope. This is a token of our appreciation, he said. I opened it and gasped. Inside was a generous sum of money. Tears filled my eyes as I looked at the mayor and then at the townspeople gathered around. Their support was overwhelming. Parker stood beside me, his face reflecting the gratitude and relief he felt. Thank you, everyone. This means more to me than you'll ever know. I said, my voice choked with emotion. Thank you, Hannah, Parker said, his voice strong and clear. You've given me hope when I had none. As I stood there, surrounded by my community, I realized that kindness truly was the greatest currency. And in that moment, I knew that this was just the beginning of something wonderful. A few days later, Hannah bought the space and within a month had converted it into a beauty salon, which she named Kindness and Beauty. The early spring sun was a welcome reprieve from the harsh winter, bathing kindness and beauty in a golden glow as I prepared for another day. The scent of fresh blooms from a nearby florist drifted through the open window, mingling with the aroma of freshly brewed coffee. The salon had seen a steady stream of clients since the gala, where we had been honored for our community contributions. Claire, ever energetic, was arranging fresh flowers on the reception desk when I walked in. Good morning, Hannah. Guess what? She said with an excited grin. Morning, Claire. What's up? I asked, my curiosity peaked. I just got the call. Our first major charity event is confirmed. She announced, her eyes sparkling with enthusiasm. Really? I said, my heart leaping. That's fantastic news. Claire nodded vigorously. Yep, it's going to be a big gala for the town's youth programs. It's a great chance to give back and promote the salon. We spent the morning finalizing plans, reaching out to local businesses for sponsorships, and organizing a list of volunteers. The community's response was overwhelmingly positive, and it felt incredible to be a part of something so impactful. The day of the charity event arrived with a crisp, clear sky and a sense of excitement in the air. The venue, a beautifully decorated ballroom, was abuzz with energy. As I arrived, I was greeted by familiar faces, all gathered to support the cause. The event was a testament to the town's spirit and unity, showcasing how collaboration could lead to wonderful results. Among the crowd, I spotted Hudson, who was mingling with a few guests. 
His presence was a reminder of the ongoing rivalry, but tonight, the focus was on the community. As I approached him, he gave me a curt nod. Hannah, Hudson said, his tone restrained. I see you've organized quite the event here. It's all for a good cause, I replied. I'm just glad to be part of it. Hudson's expression softened slightly. I'll give you credit. This event is impressive. Even if we've had our differences, it's clear you're making a difference. Thank you, I said, feeling a genuine sense of relief. I'm hopeful this event will benefit the youth programs greatly. Throughout the evening, I was busy coordinating activities, ensuring everything went smoothly, and interacting with guests. The highlight of the event was a heartfelt speech by Mayor Thompson, who praised the collective efforts of the community. Hannah, I wanted to tell you how proud I am of everything you've accomplished, Mayor Thompson said as the event wound down. The spirit of generosity you've shown is truly inspiring. Thank you, Mayor, I replied, feeling a swell of pride. It's been a team effort. After the event, as I was preparing to leave, I was approached by Parker. Hannah, I wanted to thank you for everything you've done. This event is going to make a real difference. Parker, it was my pleasure, I said, smiling warmly. Seeing the community come together like this is what it's all about. With the charity event behind us and its success resonating through the town, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. The struggles with Hudson seemed to fade into the background as the positive impact of our work took center stage. The following week, the salon continued to thrive. The success of the charity event had drawn in new clients, eager to support a business that truly cared about the community. I found myself reflecting on how far we had come since the days of uncertainty and struggle. As I sat in my office, reviewing the new appointment schedule, Claire walked in with a broad smile. Guess what, Hannah? We've had a significant increase in bookings. Looks like the charity event was a huge hit. That's wonderful news. I said, feeling a deep sense of satisfaction. It's clear that our efforts are making a difference. Claire nodded, her excitement palpable. And Hudson's salon seems to be struggling a bit. Maybe this will be a chance for him to rethink his approach. Maybe, I agreed, but for now, I'm just focused on continuing to do what we do best, serving the community and making a positive impact. It didn't take long for nine months to pass, spending all the time working. Winter had settled over the town, casting a frosty veil over the streets and turning every breath into a cloud of mist. The success of kindness and beauty continued unabated, but it was clear that Hudson's grudging admiration had turned into something more intense, a simmering rivalry. One chilly morning, I was in the midst of a busy day at the salon, surrounded by the hum of hairdryers and the chatter of satisfied clients. The salon was buzzing with a lively energy, a stark contrast to the cold world outside. Claire, my ever-enthusiastic assistant, was organizing the appointment book when the bell above the door chimed. I glanced up to see Hudson striding in, his demeanor as icy as the weather. Hannah. Hudson began, his voice cutting through the din of the salon. We need to talk. I wiped my hands on a towel, trying to maintain a calm facade. Of course, Hudson, what's on your mind? Hudson's eyes were sharp as he looked around. I've heard you've been quite busy lately. Seems like the town's really taken to kindness and beauty. I nodded, trying to keep my tone neutral. Yes, the community's been very supportive. Supportive, or just nostalgic for the good old days. Hudson's tone was laced with bitterness. I've been getting a lot of complaints about my salon. People saying that kindness and beauty is the new favorite. I raised an eyebrow. Complaints? I've only heard positive feedback about both salons. Don't play dumb, Hudson snapped. People are leaving Maras in droves. They're all singing praises of your so-called charitable approach. I could sense his frustration and try to address it calmly. Hudson, people have their preferences. I believe in providing quality service and giving back to the community. That's what resonates with them. Hudson's face reddened, 
It's not just about preferences, it's about business. And right now, you're making me look bad. If you think this is over, you're mistaken. I'm not done with this. Before I could respond, he turned on his heel and stormed out. Claire, who had been listening from the reception desk, looked at me with concern. Are you okay? She asked quietly. I'm fine, I replied, though I could feel the tension in my shoulders. Hudson's just frustrated. It's nothing we can't handle. The days that followed were tense. Hudson's bitterness seemed to seep into every interaction, with his employees becoming more hostile and his salon's atmosphere growing increasingly strained. I continued to focus on providing the best service possible at kindness and beauty, but I couldn't ignore the undercurrent of rivalry. One afternoon, as I was closing up the salon, Parker walked in, looking unusually serious. Hannah, I heard Hudson's been spreading some rumors about you, he said. What kind of rumors? I asked, feeling a knot form in my stomach. Nothing good. He's telling people that you're using your charity work as a ploy to drive business away from Mara's, Parker explained. It's starting to affect your reputation. I sighed. Feeling the weight of the accusation, I'm trying to focus on what matters, helping people and running a good business, but it's clear Hudson's not going to let this go easily. Parker placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. Just keep doing what you're doing. The community knows who you are and what you stand for. Don't let Hudson's bitterness get to you. His words were a balm to my frayed nerves. I knew he was right. The support of the community and my dedication to my values were the cornerstones of kindness and beauty. Despite Hudson's efforts to undermine me, the salon's reputation continued to flourish. Our client base grew, and the community's support never wavered. The rivalry was a challenging obstacle, but it only strengthened my resolve to prove that kindness and integrity were more powerful than any petty feud. As the days grew shorter and the nights colder, I remained focused on my mission. The rivalry with Hudson was just another hurdle in my journey, but it was one I was determined to overcome. With the unwavering support of the community and the strength of my convictions, I knew that kindness and beauty would continue to thrive, no matter the challenges that lay ahead. The success of kindness and beauty was undeniable, and Mara's beauty struggled in its shadow. Regular customers from Hudson Salon flocked to ours, drawn by the warm, welcoming atmosphere. One morning, Claire approached me, her face filled with concern. Hannah, have you heard about Mara's beauty? She asked. What's happening? I replied. Hudson's losing clients fast. Business is really bad, Claire explained. I sighed, feeling a twinge of empathy. He always focused on profits, not people. Weeks passed, and Mara's beauty became a ghost town. I occasionally saw Hudson inside, looking increasingly despondent. Months passed, and kindness and beauty continued to thrive. We expanded, opening a second branch, and I hired more staff who shared my vision. The salon became a hub of community activity, a place where people came not just for haircuts, but for connection and support. Parker became a regular, and his transformation was remarkable. He found a job, regained his confidence, and even started volunteering at the local veterans center. One evening, as I closed up the salon, I took a moment to reflect on everything that had happened. From being fired for an act of kindness to opening my own successful business, it had been a journey of growth and discovery. The support of the community had been invaluable. They had shown me that kindness was a powerful force, capable of transforming lives and building strong, compassionate communities. As I locked the door and walked home, I felt a deep sense of gratitude. Kindness and beauty wasn't just a salon. It was a testament to the power of kindness, a reminder that in a world that often values money over people, there was still a place for compassion and generosity.